Right, here we go. Yo, 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 what up, though? Melvin Farmer in the building. What's good, my guy? Oh, man, what's going on? Thank you for having me, man. It's a pleasure. No problem, man. You know, I'm excited. You know what I'm saying? Definitely one of the first people I interviewed from L.A. Um, I know Big Court came out here, but he I'm out of Kansas, out of uh, Kansas City. But thank you for coming and sitting down with me, man. Um, definitely had a chance to see your journey. It, seeing you on you and uh, Ayatollah online, man, it seemed like you guys got like a I don't want to say new outlook on life, but it seemed like y'all found y'all lane. Y'all out doing your thing, man. Like, for you, how's life treating you with all this media attention that's, that you're garnering right now? Well, I don't ever look at uh, social media or nothing that I ever do, so I don't know n nothing about uh, uh, the media attention of what's being gathered. But I know uh, as far as this culture, hip-hop, and being an oracle of... Uh, uh, Los Angeles, Watts, Compton, and other things that, uh, you know, I've been a star on the streets for better or worse. and But I've always been humbled. I've always uh, served the community. Uh, I never had no spot on my name, and I've been doing it like that. So I don't look at the Internet uh, to look at anything because uh, it's guilt by association with me. Uh, mm -hmm. I have to play chess with uh, <clears throat> Say, for instance, uh, I'm with Ayatollah Marv here today, but I might be with Bones from Athens Park tomorrow. Or I might be with Charleston White today, then WAC 100, Reggie Wright. So most of the people that are actually on the Internet and making a, bu a buzz, uh, community influence, Internet influencers, I talk to them. So I don't go and watch the Internet, so I have a... Uh, uh, unbiased opinion and I don't get involved in what a lot of people are doing out there. So that keeps me out the loop on that. What about the, um, the demand of so many media platforms want to bring you out, fly you out to come and, and talk on their, on their platforms? Like, how does that feel? Uh, well, uh, <clears throat> it's nothing new. I feel uh, 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 vindicated or happy that my voice could be heard, but also yeah. that it could open the door for other people whose voices are also silent. So I appreciate the, uh, 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 the gratitude and the extensions of it, but it's just a long journey that I've been to and to where I've evolution from a, a tax burden to a taxpayer. So it's just God's will. And I don't get too high. I don't get too low. I just keep it on an even keel. There we go. So let, I want to go take about to the journey, to the beginning. Um, from the outside looking in, L.A. and Compton, we tend to blend those two together. But in all actuality, they are very two distinct different areas. Like, what was it like coming up in L.A.? And what is this proximity to Compton? Well, all the streets, L.A., Compton, the Watts, we have numbers, first street to say 222nd. So uh, you can basically go by the streets. You start into the hundreds, 103rd on the east side, 102nd. Now you into Watts. Then Compton's was right on the other side. But we, I'm from the west side of Los Angeles. So we're approximately by car uh, with the new freeway. It's about 15 minutes from Watts, then Compton. Uh, but it's a little bit different on my side of town. Uh, most of the Los Angeles, east side, west side, the majority of the west side families came from the east side, but prior to that, they migrated from the south. Okay. So when I had the east side where I seen the businessmen, the Slossons, I've always seen street gangs. Uh, as a youth hanging out at the parks and stuff like that. But they wasn't the same as Crips and Bloods just prior to them. But uh, starting in about 68 or 69, I moved to the west side and it was integration over there. Uh, and that's also where I met Tookie uh, in the eighth grade, his sister Bridget, we in junior high. And you could be at St. Andrews Park and you'll see Tookie, Donald Archie, Raymond Washington, they all be on this end of the park. And at the other end, you'll see the Jews playing croquet and other things. So I was brought up in a two-parent home, a lot of homes, not apartments. Uh, uh, integrated schools were still uh, integrated, then they started busing. So on the west side of town, our, we didn't have older guys 
say like Compton, where Marv and them say in 52 and can talk. On the west side, they had clicks okay. from junior highs because we're migrating over there. So most of the youths, no more than 18, 19 years, they hadn't been blacks over there as entrenched as it was. So I was brought up on the side of town where uh, we had giant slide, miniature golf, theaters, swimming pools, parks and recreations, fish markets, all the things, the necessities that a white have were in contrast when I was on Hoover and grew up down that corridor, it was a little bit more grimier. You had Central, South on Central Avenue in the 40s or the 30s, that was the jazz spots, the Ella Fitzgeralds, the Charlie Birds and, and all these type of people. So it started transferring over to the West Side, Soul Train, Gang Banging, Pop Lock in the form, Dodger Stadium from Wrigley Field. So it started moving toward the East Side as far as entertainment goes. So it was a different ball game. And most of the families, contrary to what people think, those families back then were two-parent homes. Uh, but our parents didn't know we were sneaking out the window. But a lot of drug, uh, domestic violence occurred as opposed to drug addictions and the things you see now in my era. It would be the men's drinking and, and brawling and stuff like that. So I was brought up in a pretty good uh, neighborhood. Okay, and so then coming up in the neighborhood, like prior to get hitting the streets, like what what were some of your your endeavors? Like were you in the sports? Like who were, who were, who were you as a kid? Well, growing up, uh, a lot of people don't know, but in the cities, and now they're starting to know I was the number one ranked basketball player in the city at 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, well on my ways to the pros. But I made a choice to either – hang out on the courts or the corners. So I'm, I'm multitasking. I'm playing ball uh, at, the, uh, at that time in junior high at the parks. And I'm also starting to go to juvenile hall where I'm playing in there. In fact, I got out twice to be enrolled in high schools uh, to play basketball. Uh, so now I played all three sports growing up. Uh, and then an uh, uh, incident occurred uh, and that's why I don't like people to touch and whoop. I don't believe that's just the proper way because you never know how somebody uh, might rebel. Like in my case, the first time I ever did school, I was <coughs> in the sixth grade. And uh, I ain't did nothing of little ditching. Missed the class, ran back. But when I made it back coming home and I'm taking the shortcut, it looked like I don't uh, entered Rome with uh, Nero up there for to put the hands down. Everybody's saying, ooh, you going to get it. You going to get it. I'm like, what am I going to get it for? But somebody had told my daddy that uh, I was ditching, and I never will forget it. He whooped me with an extension cord, and that's the last day I ever went to class. Oh, man, damn. Yeah, I didn't like that. Wow. So, mm -hmm. so that, that impacted you? That changed the game. So I didn't like that. So you, you leave and you stop going to class after that. Like, how did you get introduced to the streets? What clique did you start to kind of form with? Well, I never ran with no cliques. I knew the Manchester Park boys, the Figueroa boys, some of the Slawsons, the businessmans. I knew them because they had younger brothers. But when I moved to the west side, they had cliques. You had Michael Conception, Barefoot Pookie, O'Neal, Brown, Melvin, Hardy, Warlock. Then these are the guys you see with Took on, on the pitches when you see very few of them. But they went to Henry Clay. They were called Smacks. Now, I met Horace Mann with Keith Henderson, Ricky Henderson, uh, Michael Jardine, uh, 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 Odie Shaw, uh, Simba, a whole gang of them, they were called cafe boys. Remember I told you they wasn't old enough to have established no gangs. Right. So they were more cliques to where they go out together, they lead together, they come back together. So uh, I met Tookie when I checked in from Bread Heart. They had just changed from the used to have to go to 7A, 7B, 8A, but they changed it where you just go 7th, 8th. So when I end up going to Bread Heart, I end up in the eighth grade, and the first girl I meet there, her name was Bridget, 
who happened to be Tookie's sister. So we was walking home from school, and that's how I knew Tookie. So I knew Tookie uh, uh, in the eighth grade. Uh, from then on, Miles and all the lot of guys you see uh, infamous on these uh, social medias, I got stories to tell. We was all 14 and 15. And then I'm playing at St. Andrews Park, and that's pretty much the maker of where the Crips started and met at in the early years. It's at St. Andrews Park. So I grew up right over there, so I had a chance uh, to witness that. But also, uh, I'm playing basketball, and I might go to Harvard Park. True story. We playing baseball at this time, me and Little Baycott and some more of us, but because we are from St. Andrews Park, and they're from Harvard Park, and you had brims on that side, five nine brims that preceded Crips on that side of town. So when we go to play baseball there, they attacking us for the shit Tookie them might mm -hmm. be doing in a higher level. But we're playing. Same way we go to play in Inglewood. Now we at the uh, chain gang at that time. Now we playing at Manchester Park. You got the Hoover. Now we playing at Van Ed's where they shot at me on the court before. So it's a lot of things that was going on back then that made it to where, hey, we're going to have to get involved to get out the game. 